Yesterday continues to prove that the future for Auburn football is very, very bright. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn. Your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blockerby. Thank you so much for making Locked on Auburn your first listen every single day. While uh, signing day wasn't exactly flashy for the 2023 class, Auburn continues to prove that the future classes should be even bigger, better, faster, and stronger, which is very, very exciting when you look at what all Hugh Freeze is bringing to Auburn from a talent standpoint. Obviously, Jeremiah Cobb, the most immediate impact, probably the second most immediate impact player in the 2023 class behind Keldrick Falk. I think Jeremiah Cobb is that special of a player, the running back from Montgomery Catholic. I cannot wait to see. And the fact that he won't be here for the spring, I think it's going to be interesting. But I'm fascinated to see, can he get touches as a true freshman behind Jarquez Hunter, Behind Brian, behind Brian Batie and behind Damari Austin. Can he get in front of Austin? Can he get in front of Batie? Do they treat these guys differently and give them different roles? I can't wait to see all of it. He's certainly going to be talented enough to do it. It's just, does he get that chance that early in his career? We will see. One of the first pictures that we saw of Hugh Freeze recruiting out in public was him and Carnell Williams sitting in a uh, getting breakfast in a place in Montgomery clear that they made him a priority. And uh, obviously that became official on Wednesday. We're going to hear from Derek Hall. We're going to hear from Eculiota later in the show. We're also going to do kind of a big picture snapshot of what all this class means with our friend, John Garcia. We did this national thing uh, throughout the lockdown college channel yesterday. And so I'm going to put that in this show. But we got to talk about the other guys that Auburn picked up. And let's start with the 2024 class, Auburn landing Jaden Lewis, another defensive back that Auburn is bringing to campus. Obviously, we're a little bit off here, but the four-star corner from Aniston. And I think this just continues to say, hey, defensive back is going to be a strength at Auburn for years to come. With guys like Kay and Lee coming in already, uh, you're going to probably see Kay and Lee and Jane Lewis on the field at the same time over the course of their Auburn career. He had a top six a week ago uh, at all top programs, Auburn, Arkansas, Florida State, Ole Miss, South Carolina, Tennessee. And he obviously chose the Auburn Tigers. Six foot, 175. He's a 20th ranked corner, according to On3. And I think he can do a bunch of different things. I think he can be physical. I think he can play off ball. And obviously, with tremendous coaching that Zach Etheridge will offer to him while he's an Auburn Tiger um, down the road, it is very, very exciting. And I think it also just kind of sets the tone, right, that we're already getting the ball rolling for the future. Hugh Freeze, he said it in the interview yesterday on Locked on Auburn, it's already focusing on the 2024 and the 2025 classes. And so what do they do? On National Signing Day, even though it's not what it used to be, they go out and get a 2024 guy that's going to be a solid four-star member of this class to kind of get this ball rolling. And they also picked up the their first member of the 2025 class. Don't mind my two-year-old running around in the background. They also added four-star defensive lineman for the 2025 class, Malik Autry, the Opelika local kid who, I mean, he talked about it. Auburn is home. He told multiple recruiting outlets. Um, that Auburn is home and just the proximity to home was important to him. Grew up being a fan of the Auburn program. So very, very exciting stuff there. And we've talked about this before. Brian Harson said it a million times. And look, to win at Auburn, um, you, you've got to win local. And I just didn't really feel like we were winning local battles. And so Charlie Five mentioned this earlier in the week with, you know, if you freeze has a few moments, like he's going over to Central Phoenix City because that's where so much talent is. And there's going to be a ton of talent in Auburn uh, City Schools at Auburn High, and there's going to be a ton of talent at Opelika High School. And Malik Autry, when you look at the upside, the upside that a kid like Malik Autry has, a 2025 defensive lineman, I mean, he's he's just got so much time to develop. <laughs> he's already like, he's already 6'6", 280. 
And some places have him listed as an edge. If he keeps gaining weight, he will not be an edge at the next level. He'll probably be a maybe a nose tackle, maybe a three technique. We'll have to see exactly how his body fills out. But that frame as a 2025 guy at 6'6", 280, you take it. You absolutely take it. And the fact that it's in your backyard, bravo, Hugh Freeze. Go ahead and get the 2025 class rolling as well. And once again, we cannot state this enough. This is important about building the future. You can't just recruit for next year. You have to constantly be building ahead. And I think the I think what happened yesterday absolutely proves that they did all of that. And just the fact that it's both defensive guys and like, I mean, both of those position groups are dudes where you, like you need dudes. You need to you need a bunch of defensive linemen. You need a bunch of defensive backs. Even though Auburn's okay in those positions this year and next year, it doesn't mean that they will always be in that situation. So props to Hugh Freeze. I think that was a really successful day for the Auburn Tigers yesterday. All right, coming up, you'll hear a conversation that I had with John Garcia and Jordan Black hosting it. Uh, just we, we did a, a, a national segment uh, covering Auburn's recruiting class. You'll hear that. And then you will hear my conversations with Eculiota and Derek Call. Some of the audio is a little fuzzy on that. My apologies. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to hear everything. I edited it as best as I could as far as removing background noises, a loud room. I did everything I can. I promise. Today's show brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is the official betting partner of the NFL. It's the official betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. And look, if you don't have a place to where you're planning on betting with, uh, with Super Bowl 57, you need to go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Uh, they have a no sweat first bet for Super Bowl 57. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet from everything from the money line, point spreads. They'll, uh, you, can, you can bet on who will score a touchdown. They've got you covered. So be sure to check that out. FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash Locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL and the Locked On Podcast Network. It's National Signing Day across the college landscape, and Locked On has you covered with the latest signings from your favorite college teams. I'm Jordan Black, and big news today from Auburn is Jeremiah Cobb made his decision. Alongside recruiting expert John Garcia, we welcome in Zach Blackerby of Locked On Auburn. Zach, take us through Jeremiah's decision, what it means for the running back room and for Auburn's recruiting class for 2023. Yeah, Jeremiah Cobb, a, a, a special, a special talent out of Montgomery Catholic and a guy that loves Carnell Williams more than anybody, it, it seems like. Um, but yeah, he, he didn't sign during the early signing period. A lot of Auburn fans were getting a little nervous about that and they could finally exhale. Take a deep breath because Jeremiah Cobb is officially a part of Auburn's 2023 signing class, which is fun. I mean, obviously running back is a solid position for Auburn right now when you look at 2023 with Jarquez Hunter. But we all know you can't have too many special running backs in the SEC. And so this is a guy that can do so many things to opposing defenses as far as being relevant in the passing game, both as a pass protector and a pass catcher. Uh, you could motion him out at the slot and, and he could be effective. I mean, this is a, just a, a, an athlete that could do all sorts of things. He also may be relevant in the kick return game early in his career, especially early on if he's splitting carries with a guy like Jarquez Hunter or maybe Damari Austin. They brought in a transfer from, uh, from uh, South Florida, Brian Batie as well. So they just want to find a way to get him on the field. And Jeremiah Cobb, he'll do that because he is that special, Jordan. He's that special of a player coming out of Montgomery Catholic. Are there any weaknesses in this class? What didn't the recruiting class kind of secure in 2023 that they should have? Question for both of you, and we'll start with Zach. Yeah, maybe maybe linebacker out of high school, uh, specifically middle linebacker. I think some of the guys that can play along the edge, they're going to be able to be relevant uh, in a few years. And then we'll, you know, we'll talk about Keldrick Falk in a second. That's just a different animal. But they address it through the transfer portal and they've got some guys with some years of eligibility left. So maybe that was kind of their plan to bridge that gap until Hugh freeze is able to have a full year to, to kind of create his own signing class. But there's not a, there's not a clear snapshot of what the future at the linebacker position looks like. And that's really the only position on the defense where you can say that you can see, okay, the defensive line may look like this in a few years. Definitely. You could definitely say that with the defensive backfield with K and Lee, John, I know you're high on K and Lee. 
And the offensive line, they definitely checked that box. Running back, they checked that box. Hugh Freeze got a quarterback out of the high school ranks that he really likes, Hank Brown, a former former uh, Liberty commit, so he kind of followed Hugh Freeze over. And so, yeah, I, I think almost by default, it's probably middle linebacker. That may be the biggest hole. I'd go to quarterback in the portal. I, I think that was really – sure kind of the obvious spot once we saw the types of quarterbacks in the portal and we know this wasn't just a one-to-one -one kind of deal there were other circumstances even academics came up with certain transfer candidates but not landing a proven veteran I think puts a lot of pressure on the group that Hugh Freeze is inheriting and there's a lot of upside with with some of them particularly Robbie Ashford from an athletic mm -hmm. standpoint so we'll see if Hugh Freeze can bring him on from a developmental standpoint, but I think he's going to kind of have to. So I think that will be a fascinating development to watch in spring and potentially beyond when that second portal window opens. Do you stay put or do you push uh, once again in a few months? I think that will be very telling on how the battle goes internally uh, in the QB room. Because look, Hugh Freeze, you bring him in to stabilize your recruiting efforts overall, to organize your recruiting efforts and increase your ceiling. But really, it's a quarterback passing situation kind of deal. And and to have that box unchecked was a little bit surprising from Auburn. But like you said, Zach, just about every other box was checked when you combine high school recruiting and the portal. Some of these portal gets were starters at other SEC and big time programs. So a lot of those guys are going to hit the ground running and then some when they get to the planes for good. But yeah, quarterback's going to be interesting to watch going forward. That room is, is going to be uh Oh, it's always intense, but it's going to be just as intense with, with Hugh Freeze, everybody trying to make that strong first impression. One of the things that Zach and I were talking about earlier, John, was the rise that this recruiting class had since Hugh Freeze got to the Plains. What did you see from a national recruiting landscape, maybe in terms of numbers, that as to how this recruiting class has improved since Coach Freeze uh, took the helm of this program? He did the work. I mean, he put together a great staff. Um, you, you kept the guy you had to keep uh, from the last staff and, and Cadillac Williams. But really, it was about the work. I mean, he was hitting the ground running in Montgomery immediately. I think the day he got to Auburn, he took the drive down 85. So, look, this is, this is what he is known for. Um, I know it came with some negative connotations, but overall – He's been known for recruiting, and I think he was able to hit the ground running in that regard, and he widened not only the the target area but the ceiling for, for Auburn's class. Uh, and he did it where Auburn had been up and down previously, which was locally. You know, he did it in Montgomery. He did it Highland Home, Keldrick Falker we'll talk about. I mean, he's as local as it gets to Auburn outside of J.C. Hart from Lotropoca, and you got both of them, right? So you you satisfied local needs, and yeah. then you had the ambition to go out and flip so many recruits, not only Falk from Florida State, but Kay and Lee was committed to Ohio State. Um, Darren Reed was committed to LSU. Sylvester Smith was committed to Tennessee. You see a theme here. You have to have the ambition to go after guys who have already given a promise to another school, and that's what Hugh Freeze comes with. It's going to be – he's going to do the work, but he's also going to be bold and ambitious in that processing, and you saw it come out very successfully for Auburn there in the end. Okay. Well, you guys have mentioned him twice now, at least let's talk about Keldrick Falk. Tell mm. us what we need to know about him and uh, tell us about him, him gaining that, that fifth star um, from rivals. Let's start with Zach and tell us what, what fans need to know about him and what he'll add to this class and this team. Yeah. I mean, I, I think he's a class changer and I think over the course of his Auburn career, he'll have the chance to be a, a defense changer. I mean, I think he is that gifted of a player coming out of high school. And you, you just look at his frame, 260, 270. He, you know, I mean, he's 6'5". I mean, he's got everything that you want. He's got violent hands. He's got a quick first step off of the line of scrimmage. And he's done it. You know, he did it against, you know, lesser competition at Highland Home. But then we've also seen him do it at these, uh, you know, these, these all-star game levels I mean, against other four and five star guys and so the fact that he was able to show that and show that flash is what got him that fifth star via rivals which is really really great but i think it also kind of sends a message i think it sends a message of hey hugh freeze is able to go out and get the guys of this caliber talent it was previously committed to florida state and that was a crushing thing but then hugh freeze and his staff they didn't give up on him they kept calling him kept calling him kept calling him and fortunately, his mother, I think, wanted him at Auburn, which certainly, certainly helped, I think, down the stretch. But all in all, I mean, Keldrick Falk, he's got a chance to start 
as a true freshman in the SEC at a very, very important position that is tasked with pressuring opposing quarterbacks and putting a lot of pressure on left and right tackles throughout the SEC. And regardless, worst case, he's going to be a rotation player behind Elijah McAllister, the transfer from Vanderbilt, and Dylan Brooks, the only edge guy that's really coming back with any sort of experience at Auburn. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot to like about the addition of Kelcher Falk. Yeah, you got to go where your mom wants you to go. Right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. For folks who don't, uh, you know, you always want your school to get the most guys with the most five stars or four stars. John, give us some perspective about what it means to to gain another star, how you do that, um, and, and what it means that Auburn was able to get a guy who got another star. Yeah, uh, like Zach said, it means a lot when you're able to do that as a brand new coaching staff, yet to coach your first real practice, much less your first game. But I think for Falk, his path to that fifth star was pretty clear to see. You know, always a tall, long, rangy prospect, very good basketball player. And then we saw him at tight end. We saw him at defensive end, just kind of this long, lean, athletic blank canvas. But over the last 12 months, a lot of the projection side of the business became realized. He got bigger. He filled out more. He got more technically polished. And like Zach said, he started to dominate everyone, not just the local guys. He started to dominate mm. national prospects in the process. So it's a projection business, but we got to see a lot of the steps taken uh, towards Keldrick Falk's projection. I mean, he's probably gained 60 pounds since he first picked up that Auburn scholarship offer. So it's much more tangible this time around so easier to go ahead and, and give him the nod in that regard because he still has that athletic foundation that length a lot of the traits that made him you know burst onto the scene despite being from highland home alabama which is not something we see every single recruiting cycle so the projection has kind of been realized and i think he kind of just forced everybody's hand hey this is my performance now it's not about two or three years from now it's about mm -hmm. right now Falk's growth in the last 12 months in particular, staggeringly amazing to see. And it's it's a projection realized with that fifth star right ahead of signing day. Okay, you two wrap us up with a quick grade of this Auburn 2023 class. And let's start with John. I'm going A minus. The only my only gripe is is the portal quarterback situation, which is kind of TBD. Wow. Um, unless this quarterback room is just better than I, I thought it was. You did address it from the high school perspective. Um, and then I think that the biggest overarching themes with Auburn were addressed. Recruiting locally, going out and flipping rival recruits, kids you would have played against otherwise. I thought the boldness of Auburn was very evident on the trail to finish with a top 15 or 20 uh, type recruiting class. Y you landed your best recruit that you had on board previously in Jeremiah Cobb, who Georgia and Clemson wanted very badly at different points. A lot of the perceptional boxes checked with Hugh Freeze. And, and you, got, you got edge guys on defense and tackles on offense. The two things – we, we know Auburn has struggled with over the last few years. So I think Hugh Freeze has, has started at Auburn from a recruiting perspective about as good or better than anybody could have expected. And I'll give him a clean A, Jordan. And, and I think I think some context is needed here, right? I mean, this, this class ranked in the 60s when Brian Harson was fired during the season. And since Hugh Freeze took over, he was able to sell something. I talked to him about it earlier this week down here in Mobile at the Senior Bowl. I, I'm like, what are you selling to these kids? Because you haven't coached a game yet. And he's like, Auburn's a special place. If you're willing to put in the work, you can win here. And over the last several years, only 12 programs have played for a national championship game twice. And Auburn's one of those. Auburn's in that discussion. They've fallen out of there over the last half decade because they didn't have the right guy leading the ship. And so Hugh Freeze is saying, hey, I'm that guy. I'm that dude. And clearly these kids believe him. Clearly, these transfer guys believe them. And so with the addition of 12 guys through the portal, I think eight or nine of them will be starters or at least heavy, heavy rotational pieces. And you also address that it, an issue uh, is almost like a sickness, Jordan, that has plagued Auburn for the last five, six, seven years is for some reason, they haven't been able to attract offensive linemen to Auburn. And all of a sudden, he's bringing in eight or nine guys to, to play along that offensive front. And so I think context is important here. Uh, I think with what he's been able to do, you got to give this class an A. Before we jump into our conversations from uh, Senior Bowl participants, Derek Hall and Eku Leota, I got to tell you about our friends at Alumni Hall. Alumni Hall is the best place to buy all of your official Auburn merchandise. You don't have to worry about if it's the wrong shade of orange, the wrong shade of blue. 
Is that actually Obby on the shirt or just some weird looking tiger? No, it actually is Obby. And they've got a bunch of stuffed Obbies. Surprise, you don't see my two year old running around in the background with her stuffed Obby. She made sure to bring it to Mobile with her because it is a part of the family at this point. You need to check out our friends at Alumni Hall. You can go to their website, alumnihall.com. They've also got physical stores in Auburn, Opelika, and the Huntsville area. Thank you so much to Alumni Hall for partnering with Locked On Auburn. Auburn Edge, Derek Hall joining us. How's uh, how's the week treated you so far? It's amazing. Uh, you know, how opportunity to get here at, at this senior bowl. I mean, it's a special opportunity. I mean, seeing all the great guys that came through here, had opportunity to play in this game and now be here myself, uh, you know, not far from Auburn and then also not far from home in Gulfport. So, you know, it's special. So, I mean, having an opportunity to learn from the best, play against the best, I mean, it's a really awkward uh, like an actual. Mel Kuyper's most recent mock has you in the first round. What's that, uh, what's, what's that mean? It means a lot, but I mean, obviously, I can't let that you know dictate anything because you none know, set in stone until that draft day. Your name is called. So, but you know, it means a lot for the opportunity for him to see you know me at the first round pick. You know my my abilities. And, you know the things that I do best. So, I mean, it means a lot. But also, I mean, I still have to stay humble. You know, be through the combine and you know try to make the best impression possible. When you look back at your time at Auburn, I mean, clearly you were a, you were a fan favorite, uh, both with what you did in your personality, who you are as, a, as an Auburn man, but also what you did on the field. Right. For, uh, during your time there, when you look back, I mean, what kind of what kind of comes to mind? The jungle. I love I love the jungle during basketball. Uh, yeah, you know, that's one big thing that I feel like you know I, I'm trying to have the opportunity to get back to before uh, the end of the regular season and do things like that. But uh, I mean, I really cherish every single moment at Auburn. I mean, there's nothing I'm going to change from you know the football program to the classroom to just to lose your walk on campus for every, every adversity I face, man. It, it really made me who I am. You know, I've ever been indebted to the institution for what it's done for me. Who's a better fan, you think? You in the jungle or Dylan Cardwell in the, in the student section of Jordan here? I don't know. It's pretty close. It's pretty uh, close. You know, him, him ripping his shirt off and then, uh, you know, us repaying that, obviously, last year. And, uh, you know, having an opportunity to, I mean, like I said, I mean, I love Dylan. You know, we, we communicate a lot. Yeah. He's, he's an Auburn man, and I feel like, you know, he loves the institution. Auburn definitely loves something back. So it's a tight race, but if I had to pick, I, I would definitely vouch for me. Sure. <laughs> I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree with that at all. Last year was a crazy year, obviously, with, with a coaching change midseason. But then the way you guys responded with Coach Lack, I mean, was that all Coach Lack? Was it leaders like yourself in the locker room? I mean, what, what were some of the conversations that you guys kind of had behind closed doors? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I kind of felt like it was a one cohesive unit kind of deal. I mean, I feel like everybody pitched in. Everybody tried to put their best foot forward to come to work every day because Lack didn't want to take credit for it. But, you know, I feel like it, it was definitely a lot to do with him. But, you know, just the style, I mean, the physique. I mean, you know, the dude had your best interest at heart and God's going to uh, so, you know, I felt like he came to work every single day, put his best foot forward during their late hours, late night, put the game plan together for us to go out and be successful. And, you know, I feel like he, he did a really good job at the time. Do you have a favorite moment at Auburn? Oh, uh, I mean, I have a lot of favorite moments. Sure. But, if you had to pick one or two, which ones would you say? Uh, to pick, really just Coach Lack being that first uh, African-American head coach. That's I, pretty cool. I, I think at Auburn is really special to have an opportunity to present him with that game ball, you know, after a uh, Texas and game, home win. Special, so you know, I, I know that really meant a lot to him you know, to have that. So, obviously, you and Eku are both here, so that uh, leaves a pretty big hole in that room. Who are you expecting to, to fill in and, and step up uh, next year? Yeah, uh, Dylan for sure. Dylan Brooks, okay. you know, the guy when Eku went down, you know, it was very detrimental that he stepped up and played good football. And uh, you know, I felt like as the season went on, he started to get his feet wet, start playing a little bit better, playing a little bit better. So, you know, I feel like you know, as, as you were known, he played really good football, he had the perfect opportunity. I mean. Just really no one left in that room, so he has to be the guy to step up and play ball. Yeah, I mean, from a from a trade standpoint, I mean, he um, it seems like he's got a good first step. It seems like uh, I mean he could be effective in uh, pursuing the quarterback. Is, is that is he somebody that can play all three downs? You think in the SEC? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know he he definitely is getting a little bit bigger. I always try to tell him about his weight. He does he got to eat. Uh, but you know I feel like he's definitely a, a you know three down guy in, in that league. Dude's long, he's rangy, right? He's athletic. Dude can rush, dude can drop. He can do it all. So you know just having an opportunity and really trying to pull him on my wing. You know, try to teach you everything that I learned from Derek and Marlon yeah. was the biggest thing. So, so who do you think the, the leaders on this defense will be next year? Oh, yeah. Uh, Nehemiah, for sure he came back. Zion Puckett, Keontae Scott, uh, Wesley Steiner, and uh, Ken Riley. So, I mean, all those guys, I, mean, I feel like that is that core group on that defense. But you know, I feel like there's more that could definitely step up. Keontae Scott, I mean, he was a newcomer last year. He must have impressed you. Oh, a lot. Uh, from day one, uh, 
we have an opportunity to play with that guy and see if he's just love for the game. He do loves football. He comes out, he plays hard. You know, he puts his best foot forward in the team, beats himself, and that dude's a baller. He got there late. Like He got there like after fall started, right? Yeah. Uh, I believe he came a little bit after camp. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean. That's pretty, that's pretty impressive, though. Yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, he, that, that dude's a baller. He, he, he loves to show him the talent. Yeah. Yeah, and they kind of use him in different ways. I mean, they put him in the middle of the field, they put him on the outside of the field. I mean, he's a pretty versatile guy. Oh, yeah, he can do it all. I mean, he's, he's a little bit on the south. I mean, he's a little ball, and he's a freaking nature. Yeah, that defensive line, I mean, a lot of you guys left, obviously, but guys like Jason Jones and then, you know, Jeffrey Embaugh is a guy that a lot of Auburn fans want to see a step forward. But talking to a lot of dudes, I mean, they can't stop talking about Marcus Harris. What do you see in a guy like him next year? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, I forgot about him and their leadership. Role, yeah, you know? sure. I feel like that guy's a big-time leader also. But I mean, he's been there. He's played me in Kobe uh, for three years. And now having an opportunity to take that step and lead that D-line, you know, I feel like he, he's going to embark on something special with that group. And, you know, him having an opportunity again, like like I said, I mean, it definitely show a lot about him, a lot about his character to do do those ball, but he's he just a ball, man. I mean, yeah. out, he plays hard. Yeah. Can't ask him much more than that. Yeah. Thank you for your time, man. Best of luck in the league, dude. Thank you. Who are you? It's great uh, being back out there. Uh, I was a little rusty yesterday, but coming back today, and getting better, getting rested. What's that rust kind of feel like? Is it more fatigue? Is it just uh, kind of, you know, getting back into muscle memory? What all goes into muscle that? Muscle memory. Uh, yeah. Just getting back to the fundamentals. Uh, uh, but it just feels good watching the game. Yeah. Yeah. The the one on one coaching. I mean, I saw y'all, you and Derek both, kind of get pulled to the side a little bit and kind of get coached up. How how much is it more detailed hearing it from an NFL coach, or, or is it more detailed than kind of what you guys were used to at Auburn? Um, it's just different. Um, coaching is coaching in the day. Um, just listening to coach. Um, back to the pictures. It means a lot. Just their knowledge, just learning from them every single day in the film room. You know, taking it out to the so. Yeah. I mean, is it like footwork stuff? Is it like, hey, when this happens, look for this? I mean, what what kind of what kind of stuff are they teaching? Yeah, just uh, back to the fundamental stuff. You know? Yeah. We have it. Today was really the first day. For every, I mean, yesterday was the first day for everybody. So it, was, it felt a little weird getting back out there. But uh, today's going to be a good day. So. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, pictures of, of you hugging Hugh Freeze after yeah. practice. If you uh, Obviously, you won't get to play for him, but has, has he reached out to you? Has he talked to you? Anything like that? Yeah. Uh, you know, Hugh Freeze is a great guy. So I'm just... Having them out there supporting us sure. um, meant a lot. Uh, prior to, we didn't really talk much, but uh, he's doing a great job down uh, in the plains, and I'm excited for, for the Tigers. Sure. So, yeah, absolutely. Who are some of the guys that are still on that defensive line that you think could take a big step this year? Yeah, Marcus Harris. Marcus gonna Harris. Be, Marcus okay. Harris can be great. Uh, Jason Jones, them two in the middle are going to be dominant. And then we got Dylan Brooks. I'm really excited to see Dylan do his thing this year. And uh, I'm transferred Elijah McAllister. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, excited to see him. Yeah. I'm excited to see him do his thing. He's bringing a ton of experience. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's certainly valuable. What, what do you see in a guy like Dylan Brooks? Yeah, I just see uh, this is a big year for him you know, in terms of growth, development. And I, you know, I just told him that uh, offseason is really important for you to be in the weight room, get physically strong, and he's got all the tools to be, you know, a great and take it to the next level. But sure, I'm really excited to see him grow on and off the field. You know, so. Yeah. A guy that a lot of Auburn people are excited about, Jeffrey Embaugh. We didn't get to yeah. see a whole lot of him on oh, the field, yeah. but it seems like all the tools are there. Maybe yeah. just a little raw. What have you seen from him? Yeah, Jeffrey, is, he's down. Really? Uh, he's, uh, is he more of an inside guy, or is he like a strong side DN? What do down, you see tonight? I think he can play anything. Okay. Um, he can go out to the end. You just saw Mississippi State last year, and he was, you know, he, he got a strip sack. So it was, uh, yeah, I'm sure. excited for Jeffrey. He's, he's going to take a big step. You know, he's from France, so he's, you know, yeah. football is definitely uh, new to him. So, but he's just so he last last year was really raw, um, but you could just see uh, the, um, 
to grow. Like, this, this year is going to grow really, really yeah, well. Yeah, just learning learn the game is a big part of it. Yeah, so I'm excited for year two. For yeah, no um, doubt about it. Favorite Auburn moment? Favorite Auburn moment? Uh, probably... Uh, I, 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 yeah, and, and I, I was kind of expecting the A and M game, but like you weren't you weren't able to play, so that that kind of made damper that a little. Yeah, yeah the A and M game was pretty special. I would yeah. say uh, just watching the team come together, um, had like really staying, staying the energy, and just uh, it, was, it was really special to be a part of that and just being on the sideline supporting my team. Sure. Eku, thanks for everything you did at Auburn, man. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you have a very long and successful NFL career. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that does it for today's show. A um, little bit of everything on today's show. We'll get back into the normal swing of things, hopefully tomorrow. You can find all my written work at auburndaily.com. Until then, this has been Locked on Auburn.